Ms. Nadia Samdin. Sir, I rise in support of the bill. Liberal and conservative views towards drugs describe little about the underlying human condition that fuels the necessity of today's debate here in these chambers, namely addiction. Regardless of society's personal attitudes and perspectives on drugs, addiction is a problem that needs societal attention going beyond punitive measures. While we seek to tackle the supply side issues through this bill, my suggestions are rooted in supplementing the punitive measures with programs and rehabilitation that tackle the issue of demand fueled by addiction. Clause 2B amends the definition of drug addict in Section 2 to include a person who, through the use of any psychoactive substance, has developed a desire or need to continue to take that psychoactive substance or a psychological or physical dependence upon the effect of that psychoactive substance. The effect of this amendment is that a person who is addicted to a psychoactive substance may be committed to supervision, treatment or rehabilitation under Section 34. Now, this is aligned with existing powers with respect to controlled drugs. I remember a photo and some headlines in June 2022 which said that a baby was found in a squalid flat close to his mother during a recent drug bust. It was reported that his mother was a user. I saw some of the online comments. While majority agreed that drugs are harmful and supported a drug-free Singapore, some went further to call the mother heartless, useless and condemned her, among other terms that I cannot reproduce here. Most people saw first a mother who was irresponsible as she was a user. A few looked at the photo with a slightly different lens and saw a user who was struggling with her addiction, yet doing the best that she could to still be a mother. I do not know either mother or child, but hope that both are getting the support and care that they need. If you can't bond with society healthily because you're traumatised or beaten down by life, you may bond with something else that gives you a sense of relief. People who develop addictions are often looked at society as being a person that has developed a fatal character flaw. However, research has shown that addiction is a medical condition that is often linked to undesirable conditions that create the disposition in the very first place and has the propensity to develop in the absence of a healthy environment. A classic study conducted on soldiers reintegrating back into society post-war in Vietnam by Lee N. Robbins followed soldiers who used heroin heavily during the war after they returned home in order to track if that translated into lifelong addictions. The data in the study found that environmental and social factors had a correlative effect on the soldiers' decision to continue to abuse drugs after coming back from the war. Soldiers who came back to families and support structures were less likely to abuse drugs. In Singapore, drug addiction remains a complex issue, having an adverse impact on individuals, families and society. Over the years, the government has implemented a range of rehabilitation programs. For example, in 2014, the Enhanced Drug Rehabilitation Regime, EDRR, was introduced for first- and second-time drug abusers. In 2019, the Drug Rehabilitation Regime was further enhanced to commit third-time and subsequent drug abusers who are not charged with any other criminal offences to DRC. I hope we can continue to enhance our rehabilitative approaches. In particular, programs need to take into account evolving research and the complex and evolving environmental circumstances of drug addicts in order to provide personalised support. In our current rehabilitation programs, such as programs by the DRC, Community Rehabilitation Centre and the National Addictions Management Service, there is already significant detachment from a one-size-fits-all approach. I welcome this taking into account the fact that each individual's experience with drugs and addiction is unique and as such, treatment should be tailored to their specific needs. For example, some may require more intensive counselling, some may re- benefit more from group therapy or medical interventions. This is salient, as research has shown that the lack of personalised support results in a lower success rate for rehabilitation programmes. I would like to ask if the government is looking to support and scale initiatives that have proven their ability to offer more personal and cost-efficient support to drug addicts seeking to reintegrate with society. 
In addition, how does the government seek to improve the efficiency of these support initiatives by pairing it with harm reduction strategies like overdose prevention programs and medication-assisted treatment? Further, the lack of sustained longer-term support may lead to an addict's relapse and disappointment by loved ones, ultimately straining relationships and exacerbating addiction. This will create a harmful cycle. The guiding aim of what I have mentioned will be to provide individuals with the tools to reduce the harm associated with drug use, keeping them safe and consistent as they work towards recovery, as we know that change does not occur overnight. According to statistics by CNB, drug abuse among our youth has declined since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is positive news as it suggests that despite the increased social stresses and anxieties brought about by the pandemic, illicit substances were not an avenue that youths turned to to seek relief. However, Mr. Sam T, the current director of CNB, added in an interview in November 2021 that abuse among youth of certain substances is quickly returning to pre-pandemic levels. <clears throat> the correlation between mental health challenges and drug use cannot be understated. People self-medicate in an attempt to feel better and often end up exacerbating the symptoms of the very condition that they are trying to soothe. Collaboration between schools, communities and youth networks may help the development of a spot identify and intervene framework that could prevent the development of addiction to substances. We must also recognise the etiology of mental health issues, such as inadequate supervision, lack of consistency in home environments, frequent parent conflicts, domestic violence, etc. A child growing up in these circumstances will not solely be deterred by the proverbial stick. Next, I applaud further measures to safeguard our young population from the dangers of drugs and NPS addictions. In an effort to evade legal restrictions, drug manufacturers have resorted to synthesizing substances that mimic the effects of conventional drugs. Moreover, the adolescent demographic may be particularly vulnerable to succumbing to peer pressure or experimenting with illicit substances due to a lack of awareness or understanding of trade-offs. Thus, Provisions in Part 2A, such as Section 11N, 11P and 11Q, are appropriate. Attempts to shield our youth from being exposed to drug-related information, while important, also needs to be realistic. Information permeates through phones and contradicting narratives and perspectives of drugs can easily be found online. It is helpful to communicate in commonly accepted direct narratives rather than blanket statements. For example... Substance addiction often leaves the addict in a place where they lose agency over their lives. Efforts such as Finding Juliana, the TikTok campaign by Nakada, illustrate this point well. Titled What's Your Fix, the campaign sought to develop an understanding on how addictions develop and employed social media apps such as TikTok to impart knowledge and encourage positive decision-making rather than scaring our youths. Also, we need to be proactive in our approach to help those who have not yet fallen prey to drug addiction but are still at risk. Previously, I volunteered with younger girls in RTC and often left prisons worrying about the conditions that they would meet post-release, financial challenges and poor familial relations, as well as sometimes parents who were users themselves. I hope we can further study the issue of vulnerable youth and intergenerational addiction so that effective and timely support can be extended to them. According to the 2021 report on youth delinquency by MSF, youth offenders who have experienced adverse childhood experiences are more likely to engage in drug abuse at a younger age and with a greater dependency. The report also highlighted that family disruptions are a significant factor, hindering the social and emotional development of children and increasing the likelihood of substance abuse. As such, I urge this House to also prioritise strategies to support family cohesion and address the underlying issues that contribute to family disruptions, especially where parents are already users, while we introduce these amendments to the MDA. To conclude, it is imperative that policies aimed at addressing misuse of substances continue to account for the multifaceted circumstances that contribute to this. It is only by taking a whole-of-society approach and effectively addressing both supply and demand for illicit substances that we can protect our people from the pain and suffering caused by substance addictions. Sir, I support the bill.